Okay, so we're gonna learn about the stock market. This is gonna be the introductory video. We're gonna learn how the markets work, that they work a certain way, that there are various entities involved with decision making, and there's also various entities involved with different areas in the market. There is no one villain, there is no one hero. The markets are the markets, and that's all there is to it. So put your thinking cap on, and let's get started. Part one is gonna be looking at the agencies that are running the show basically in the stock market and we're going to go ahead and get into that and keep in mind the stock market is a place where you can make money is also a place where you can lose money however with today's tools that are available for each trader to use at their disposal there's never been a better chance for retail traders to come out ahead now before we go any further the vast majority of people who trade in shares as in the underlying in the market those are already your wealthiest 10% of American households. So when you think of a bunch of retail banding together to take over the market and you think of the market crashing in general, this fact right here simply prevents that. So who makes the rules? Who regulates, who governs, and who writes all of the rules to the market? Well, let's start with the DTCC. The Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation is an American post-trade financial services company providing clearing and settlement services to the financial markets. It performs the exchange of securities on behalf of buyers and sellers and functions as a central securities depository by providing central custody of securities. So DTCC is the main parent company as far as the general post-trade financial services are concerned in the markets. In trading, you have three things. You have execution, clearing, and settlement. DTCC takes care of two of those three things. They are your primary custodial agent, and they also have two subsidiaries, which are the National Securities Clearing Corporation, as well as the Depository Trust Clearing Company. Each of these different institutions has their own rules, and you can find them all on the DTCC's main webpage. Now the NSCC is the National Securities Clearing Corporation. They uh, deal with specifically clearing and they also deal with failures to deliver as well. There's a thing called the Obligations Warehouse that the NSCC actually owns and that is where a lot of those things are settled. There's also such a thing as continuous net settlement which is something that the NSCC offers to its members to net down their capital requirements. And what you're seeing here on the screen is the picture of the rule filings page that you can view to see upcoming and current rules that are waiting to be approved or disapproved or have been designated longer. There's rules all the way dated back to 1997 and maybe even longer. So the stock market not only works a certain way, there's a track record of how it's changed from the past from how it is today. Now, the Depository Trust Company is another subsidiary of the DTCC. So you have the DTCC, which is the parent company, your primary custodian. Then you have the DTC, and you have the NSCC as their uh, subsidiaries. And the DTC is one of the world's largest securities depositories. Founded in 1973 and based in New York City, the DTC is organized as a limited-purpose trust company and provides safekeeping through electronic record keeping of securities balances. So in the 1980s, we went from paper to digital. Uh, the DTC and the NSCC were consolidated around that time with the DTCC to make the transition a little bit smoother. Um, still, they are still, to this day in 2022, trying to dematerialize the physical certificates, which if you look back on the DRS stuff that happened last year, a big incentive for that for the industry was to get people to DRS their shares so they could get rid of all the physical certificates like they've been trying to do for the last 10 years. Now, it also acts as a clearinghouse to process and settle trades in corporate and municipal securities. So while we have the clearing and settlement from NSCC, um, on the retail side, on the DTC side, we have corporate and municipal securities clearing. It was founded in 1973, and it is also one of the world's largest securities depositories. The DTC's automated system lowers costs and improves accuracy. The DTC provides direct registration, as we all know, underwriting, 
reorganization, and proxy and dividend services. In 2021, the DTC held more than 1.3 million current securities issued, valued at $87 trillion, and issued in the U.S. and 131 countries and territories across the world. Now, on top of the DTCC and their subsidiaries, you have a standalone organization or agency that is referred to and called the Options Clearing Corporation. It is the buyer to every seller and the seller to every buyer when it comes to options trading in the, in the stock market. It's a United States clearinghouse based in Chicago, primarily deals with options clearing. It specializes in derivatives, providing central counterparty or CCP, clearing and settlement. And it does this to 16 exchanges. Started by Wayne Lutheringhausen and carried on by Michael Cahill. Um, instruments include options, financial and commodity futures, securities futures, and securities lending transactions. And all this data can be accessed from their website at any time. Now, what do all these things have in common? Well, what they're called is self-regulatory organizations or SROs for short. Now, what this means is they are self-regulatory. They write their own rules. The SEC is merely in place to enforce uh, the, the Securities Act of 1933 by making sure that the rules that they write are in fact compliant with that rule. So you have self-regulatory organizations, which is an entity such as a non-governmental organization, which has the power to create and enforce standalone industry and professional regulations and standards on its own. In the case of financial SROs, such as stock exchanges, the priority is to protect investors by establishing rules, regulations, and set standards of procedures that promote ethics, equality, and professionalism. A lot of word salad. Now, a self-regulatory organization is one that has the power to set industry standards. Effective SROs are able to provide standards and enforcement of those standards on their members. Although SROs can be privately owned, the government can still dictate their broader policies. Industries can band together and start their own SROs, which allow them to maintain competitiveness and safety concerns if there is a lack of government oversight. Now, when, it taught, when, when they refer to the 16 exchanges, there are 16 stock exchanges in the financial markets, and we're going to go over them real quickly. And listed here on the screen, you're going to see a, a few more than 16 because there are 16 lit exchanges and those are the NYSE floor which on average takes about 10% of your market share the NYSE ARCA 8.68% of the overall market share investors exchange 2.57% members exchange 3.34% NASDAQ PSX 0.92% FINRA um, that, that, sorry get, get to that one later SIBO EDGA 1.53% Long-term stock exchange, that one's basically dead. NYSE Chicago, 0.42. NYSE National, 0.70. NYSE American, 0.40% of market share. MIAX Pearl, 1.31% of overall market share. You have SIBO EDGX, which is 5.28%. SIBO BYX, which is 1.49%. And then you have SIBO BZX at 5.28%. And then finally, NASDAQ BX for 0.55%. Well, you may be asking yourself, that's not a lot of market share per exchange. And as you see here, no single lit exchange currently has more than 10.10% of the current total market share on a daily basis. This is where the fragmented market and your dark pool trading comes from. The fact that your lit volume is not on exchange, it's off exchange. And when I say off exchange, that's what draws me to our other three candidates here. You have the NASDAQ ADF, which is the alternate display facility, takes up 41.14% of market share, and it is paired trades off exchange to a alternative dark pool, the ADF, and is owned and controlled by FINRA. There's only two registered members. That would be J uh, Jane Street and JP Morgan. You also have the FINRA and NASDAQ TRF Carteret, which is where you can see order flow coming in through the time and sales on any of your brokerage apps. You can actually see it if you have the, uh, the, the quoting subscription. You can see the TRF takes the majority of the volume for paired shares, coming in with a whopping 35.31% overall. 
So this is where the fragmented market comes from. There's a big monopoly on order flow, and that's not coming from PFOF. It's coming from the unlit exchanges. Now, again, the ADF and the FINRA, NASDAQ, TRS, Chicago, and Carteret are owned and operated by FINRA, which used to be the NASD back in the early 2000s. NASD became FINRA, and they are very closely tied with NASDAQ. Now, FINRA is also known as the gatekeeper because they have the power to license securities dealers. I'm trying to get licensed right now for my Series uh, 66, and um, they are the gatekeeper. They, their authority includes the ability to audit dealers and associated firms and to ensure compliance with the standards currently in place. The goal is to promote ethical industry practices and improve transparency within the sector. And then, of course, you have the SEC, which is the enforcer. Now, they don't make rules, because remember, the self-regulatory organizations do that. They're just here to make sure they're in line with the Securities Act of 1933 and other statutes that have been put in place. The SEC oversees securities exchanges, so these right here. And as far as exchanges, it's kind of a gray area because they only oversee the lit exchanges. Those ones that dominate market share, they do not. Now, the Securities and Exchange Commission, um, again, oversees exchanges, brokers and dealers, investment advisors, and mutual funds in an effort to promote fair dealing, in an effort to promote fair dealing, the disclosure of important market information, and to prevent fraud, which we know they do not do a very good job at because they're in the business to make money off of this crime. That's the crime. The crime that you see is found by the SEC. The crime you see on your brokerage app, that's not crime. That's just you not understanding what you're looking at, which is what this video series is for. So when you put all this together, what do you get? You get the underworkings of the market from a regulatory and self-regulatory standpoint. You have, and there's more to this. This is just the basics. You have FINRA and the SEC as a regulatory bodies. They're all, there, there is more like the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, things like that. Um, and you have the DTCC, primary custodian, you have the DTC, which does municipal securities and government and corporate securities. NSCC does your FTDs and clearing and settlement for retail side secondary market trades. You have the OCC, the, the Options Clearing Corp, which primarily clears for options and, and is the buyer and seller for every options contract. And then you have the 16 exchanges that must follow all rules coming from these parent companies and they also write their own rules as well. So whenever you see those SR 2021-51 NASDAQ, that's what these are because they write their own rules. And then the SEC, FINRA, and DTC make sure that all compliances are met, such as capital requirements and things like that. However, since 2019, things are different. There is an additional party that we must include in this group of, of agencies, which is none other than the United States Federal Reserve System. Now, when you add this into the mix, when you combine it all together, you have custody, registration, licensing, enforcement, settlement, clearing, regulation, and fiscal monetary policy governing the markets. That's just a pure fact. All these things together is what you need to be looking at to get a good gauge of what is actually happening in real time in the market. So this is what governs the market. It's mainly self-regulated and everything works a certain way. So next we're gonna get into how to find the information that you can look at to start learning how things work a certain way. And um, the goal here is for you to learn as much as possible and rely as little as possible on social media.